Hey friends, my name is June and I'm a developer advocate here at Zeppelin. Today, I'm super excited to host this brand new series called Hops and Ops. Now you may be thinking, why Hops and Ops? What's up with that name? Well, first, we want to create a space where we can learn from technical industry leaders about their operational workflow. This is all about how leaders manage the relationship between designers and developers. So I thought, hey, I want to have a chill, laid back environment to talk with these leaders. What's more chill and laid back than having a talk over a beer? For those of you who don't know, hops is a key ingredient in beer, so that's why we named it Hops and Ops. That's a pretty good ring to it, right? To kick things off, I'm joined by my friend Adam Jones, who is a tattoo lover. He fishes daily, the fan of the NBA, in particular the Indiana Pacers. I'm not sure why. They haven't won anything since the 70s, but that's neither here or there. And he's also an amazing dad. On top of all those things, he's also the group director of mobile apps and emerging technology at BML YNR. Adam, do you mind introducing yourself to our friends here and break down what you actually do because you have a super long title. Uh, that I do. So thank you for having me. Uh, name is Adam Jones. I am a group director of mobile apps and emerging technology here at VML YNR. Um, really what that means is I'm, I get to have some fun every day working directly with our development, design, QA, and more importantly, our product owners on the client side and supporting them. And, and that can be anything from kind of helping out with mobile strategy for iOS and Android apps or helping kind of develop and refine processes for the developers and designers. Great, yeah, can't wait to dig into your process there. Uh, for those of you who don't know what VML YNR is, it is an agency founded all the way back in 1923. That's a very, very long time. And funny enough, Walt Disney was also founded in 1923. So you're in good company. DML YNR has over 7,000 employees worldwide, and they're all about creating connected brands with companies like Ford, Wendy's, Sherwin-Williams, and Intel to create connected digital experiences. All right, now for the fun part, Adam. Let's go ahead and get our beer. Today, we're drinking the Dogfish Head uh, Sea Quench Ale Session Sour Beer. That's the beer. Let me get into focus a little bit. We'll just crack it open. We'll rate it on a figure skating scale, so no uh, round numbers, and then um, we'll move on to the meat and potatoes of this talk. So let's crack this open. A little sip. Oh wow, it's a really sour beer. I never had really, I never had sour beers before. Adam Agreed. is a sour beer aficionado. He, <laughs> well. picked this, he picked this type of beer. Um, I'm gonna give it like a, like a seven point one. I'm gonna try another sour beer. This beer is a little, a little sour for me. Uh, Adam, you, your, your opinion weighs a lot more than mine. What would you rate this? So uh, I, I'm willing to give this a seven five. Okay. Um, I am not, uh, for me to finish a, a whole can of beer is a big deal. Um, but, and so I, I'm not a big hops guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, yeah, I, I feel like I could drink this whole thing and, and, uh, not feel nauseous. So that's good. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, this is just a little sour for me, but like I said, I'm going to give it another shot. A little quick interesting <laughs> fact is that I was wondering like, what makes a beer sour, you know, between regular beer and sour beer. It's because of the wild yeast and bacteria that they use uh, as a key ingredient in making this sour beer. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, okay, so now that we've got all the fun on the way, let's go ahead and get down to business. So Adam's here today to walk us through his team's workflow with Zeppelin and Jira, which streamlined their collaboration and helped them ship features out faster. But before we jump into your workflow, Adam, what are some of the challenges you face when managing your designers and developers? Yeah. So I think the number one, I, I, you know, no surprise is, and I think it's something everybody manages, which is just communication um, and not necessarily in a negative light. Um, you know, a lot of the times um, I am on the, the native app side of the house. So iOS and Android develop, development and, and designers, um, a little bit more special, specialized group. Um, so we, we share a lot of the same team members and, and the same pods kind of get pushed around to different projects. But it doesn't mean that during the, that process um, that every client we're kind of redefining um, or maybe refining is a better word there, um, our processes, um, because the product owner, the client is changing. Mm -hmm. um, we may find that there's, you know, a new tool that we want to kick the tires on or, or a new a new idea on a process that we want to try. And so we encourage that with the teams. Um, to not be too rigid with that process. Mm -hmm. um, so practice good hygiene, you know, um, beyond brushing teeth and combing your hair, uh, as a team, practice that good hygiene and, and establishing some practice. Um, but don't be afraid to kind of, you know, change it up a little bit and, and do what works for the team. 
Uh, yeah, I think you hit on a couple of key points there. One is like uh, communication, you said. And secondly is, you know, EML YNR is an agency, right? So your clients change all the time, but your developers and designers stay the same. Um, are they like in a traditional working manner in terms of, you know, if I were at, you know, Zeppelin or Google, whatever else, would that relationship be different than working at an agency? Um, not really. I, I, I hope not. Um, you know, right. I think that's one of the things that we strive for is like we look across beyond just agencies. Um, we look at to see what other people like Zeppelin and Microsoft and Apple and, and Google are doing um, when it comes to tools. Um, because we, we have we've evolved that process quite a bit from when I started here eight years ago. Um, we were doing the fun. Here's a PSD use slicey and we were unfortunately asking the developers to do work that they're not meant to do. Um, and so we've transitioned from tools like Sketch and a lot of the teams are on Figma or Sketch Cloud or XD today. Um, and so we, we've evolved that process throughout. And a lot of it has been watching the industry and, and the new folks that come in that teach us things. Got it, got it. Um, so it seems like, you know, the ever-changing landscape of, you know, the project that you're on, um, could have communication challenges, uh, yeah. especially when you're moving from one project to another. Um, so that's, that's, I think, a good like, pain point that you experienced that you could share. The second challenge I think um, I want to kind of get into is something that we talked about before on um, organizing large teams. Can you talk a little bit about that, Adam? Yeah. Um, you know, one, one thing that we try to do, and, and I think it's it's kind of been born out of the relationship that our designers um, like Scott Gibson and Ryan Hannenbaum have had with our clients, which is um, they don't they don't chase perfection or nor do they um, hold the designs too precious. Um, the the design process or the ideation process is the team process. So we have the developers, the QA, the client are all involved with that. Um, and so while a larger team does mean that you you do have more seats at the table, um, we think it's really important, no matter if it's a, a team of five, a really lean team, um, or, or a large team, that everybody kind of has that voice to get that buy-in. Um, and so we, we do struggle. I think everybody struggles with that, of making sure everybody feels included and, and that their, their input is just as important as the designer's. Um, because just because they're, you know, moving pixels around the screen and making things look nice, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they're the final deciders on what the product is. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I think like, you know, with, as a team grows organically over time, um, like you said, you have more, you know, seats at the table, but you also get a lot more opinions, a lot more different tools, a lot more processes, and there has to be something to kind of get everyone on the same page, right? Or else it's going to be a very daunting task to complete a project. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, that's, you know, you and I've talked about it a handful of times of just um, a, a lot of the times when it's we we have internally positioned Zeppelin as a development tool, not a design tool. Um, and, and a lot of that is because our mobile app developers want and need to use that tool because they get specific things out of it that they, at least today, cannot get out of some of the inspect tools that are built into the design tools. And um because we have Sketch and XD and Figma out there um, in different teams, depending on what office you're in, we don't want the, the developers to have to be well-versed in all three of those tools to be able to do their job. Um, and so Zeppelin was, is a connective tissue there um, that doesn't require too much from the design team and too much from the development, but gives them that kind of central location where they can pull those assets out of and, and we can plug it into Jira. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, as a developer before myself, I think um, we're kind of tasked to kind of learn all these tools, right? And you just mentioned three of the most popular design tools, Adobe XD, Figma, and Sketch. And uh, for a developer to kind of learn all those things, it's, it's uh, you know, like a, it's a daunting task. You know, it's like having a designer go into my VS Code file and extrapolate some of the um, things that they need, right? Yeah, and yeah. I think I think that eliminates all those things of like, you know, a developer or whoever else trying to go into these design files, going through all these nested layers and trying to find something. And that takes a lot of time um, out from the developer to actually develop and actually code. Your you know, developer now is doing more um, other things to actually produce code. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
Got it. And then the last thing, what was the last challenge that you faced, Adam, when managing um, your developers and designers? Yeah, um, a, a lot of it. And you know, this is is a, I, I would like to think a little unique to the the app side of the house, which is the platform nuances, right? Um, you know, um, Scott Gibson, the, the designer I mentioned, you know, he they've put a lot of work into building that team. So those designers are very aware of those nuances and and that way they can they can speak similar languages as the developer when they're trying to articulate that to the client mm -hmm. um, and, and make the client understand and you know, feel comfortable in decisions that, hey, there's going to be deviations and, and changes on Android and iOS from a, a UI or an aesthetic standpoint. And, you know, users aren't going to sit there with both devices in their hands trying to compare them. And, and we're just trying to skate to where we know Android users feel comfortable and same with iOS. Um, so we want it to feel natural to those users. And so that's always as we onboard um, new team members or new, new folks into the process, whether that be um, delivery or, or QA or even a designer, um, making sure that they're kind of aware of those nuances across those platforms. Got it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, definitely a lot of nuances between different platforms and you know, not only developer, but I think you know, other people on the team need to kind of get up to speed, whether that be a designer or a PM or other parts of the actual product team. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, Adam, I think we talked about before about, you know, t-shirt sizing and, and how that works, right? Um, I think this kind of fits in here. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So what we, and this, this process has evolved a bit, I think, in the last couple of years, um, as we have started getting smarter on how we use Zeppelin and the JIRA integration a bit. Um, but typical we had done in the past is we actually would use the Slack integration um, with Zeppelin and we'd create a channel um, and the design team um, does a really good job of when they, they kind of get the product owner at that 80%, like the product owner feels like we're about 80% there in the feature request. Um, we'll go ahead and, and that kind of is the marker. Um, we'll push that into Zeppelin at that point. Um, that channel um, then will notify the developers who are on that channel that there's a new design in there. Um, and we encourage them, you know, at their, you know, coffee breaks or if they needed a downtime or whatever, take a peek in there, put some comments um, because, um, you know, we, we always hammer that one screen doesn't equal one JIRA ticket, right? Um, that we, the design or the developers would go in there and say, hey, I, you know, this may be broken out to this. This is a comparable component to something we've done previously. Um, and it allowed them to kind of see what was coming down the pipe and allow our program manager or project managers to be able to start kind of scoping and understanding the what laid in front of us in terms of effort. Mm -hmm. um, but that, and we'll see this in the demo, but like, I, I feel like that's, we've evolved that a little bit um, because of some of the communication and the meetings that we have. Um, and, and a good way we kind of over communicate nowadays um with just meetings i think and some of that i think is just output from the last two and a half years um mm -hmm. of having to adapt to this um and so we just over indexed on it and so some of those those things that we would do like t-shirt sizing in zeppelin um have kind of dissipated hmm. so um i think this is where also you talked about to me beforehand with this whole teacher sizing and all these varying platforms is you have a team in Poland and you do these, uh, I think monthly things called coffee in Poland. And I uh, just want to double click into this where, you know, you talked about before where in the Figma file, it's more about I thought before where you finalize, where you, you know, experiment a lot, you move things around, nothing's too precious. And then, um, and then the developers are also in there. So then that whole teacher sizing becomes a little bit more, um, easier to grasp, I would say, like the developers are pulled in earlier earlier on, mm -hmm. but they have some, you know, stake in it as well. So then they also, you know, are on the same page, right? They could contribute to it as well as, um, you know, they actually get it. Yeah, yeah. So the the Coffee with Poland that you mentioned, uh, we actually do that weekly. Oh, um, weekly, okay. Yeah, and so what happens there is, you know, we, the um, Scott and Ryan have their conversations with Jake and Paul, um, when it comes to um, the product and the features. Um, but then from there, um, we follow that up with a coffee with Poland meeting. Um, and that allows the developers, the QA and the BA to all have a part of that conversation. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it is. It's a very um, Figma is open. People are moving things around and throwing out ideas. Um, but, it, you know, the developers know what's coming. QA knows what's coming. Makes life easier. Got it. And then after you kind of played around with Figma, that's when you bring it over to Zeppelin and make it real and ready for development. Yep, absolutely. Got it. Well, cool. I think we went over the challenges. Um, thanks for doing that, Adam. Why don't we break into a demo? Yeah. You can go ahead and share Let your me... screen. Yep. Let me cool. do that. So while we're bringing that up, Adam, I think we're going to be talking about the United Rentals app, right? Uh, it won won a couple awards. Um, I think it won the Keynes Award on your side for the mobile app, and it won the Vega Award on the web app side. And I think the Vega Award um, entailed that I think you guys saved United Rentals like six or seven million dollars, uh, yeah. which is pretty amazing. Like you yeah. revolutionized a, like an antiquated industry and you know injected digital transformation to it. And now they're getting the ROI. Um, like six or seven million dollars. That's spectacular. Yeah, yeah. They uh, it, it was uh, a can award that we had won for the app. Uh, I think it was twenty twenty mm-hmm. or no twenty twenty one maybe. Um, but yeah, so uh, United Rentals is like the the world's largest equipment rental. Um, so you know you could drive by large construction sites. Um, the the blue equipment that you see is them. Oh, okay. Um, and so the the app itself is not meant to necessarily be just a rental process, um, mm-hmm. but is meant to be a managed. Um, it's really the hero flow of the app is for them to be able to manage their equipment um, and do off rents and extends. Nice. And this is the iOS app we're looking at here, right? Yes. Um, and so, like you know, I I always I'm always intrigued with. Uh, when teams like uh, Microsoft and them were showing how they had built a uh, iOS uh, Outlook app. Um, it's always interesting to see how they, they structure their files, I think. Um, and even internally from our teams, I always find that weirdly intriguing. <laughs> um, um, but so this is hopefully Ryan and, and, and Scott don't mind me sharing, but like this one we keep pretty simple. Um, they do a good job of keeping it really organized. Um, but uh, we have that client showcase. Um, so that's, you know, when we have our PO meetings, um, that's typically where they're going to they go in to kind of show where they, what they've been working on. Um, when, you and, say, and maybe, when you say PO meetings, is it the Coffee with Poland meetings? or? Oh, that... no, sorry. Yeah, that, that would be the product owner. So that would be the actual, the actual work with the client themselves. Okay. So for, yeah, so for United Rentals, um, Jake is our, our product owner. And so he... He's a United Rentals employee, and, and his responsibility is the experience that is the app itself. Um, so they'll connect the prototypes into this client showcase, and so they'll go into the prototype mode, you know, and be able to click through and kind of give an idea of what that may look like. Um, user testing, exactly like it sounds, and then we have our boards for iOS and Android designs. Sandbox is exactly kind of you alluded to, um, is kind of throw stuff against the wall. Um, the one thing I absolutely love about Scott and Ryan and and other teams do this as well, but, um, they, they, when I say that nothing's too precious is, you know, they they jump in there and as Jake goes, well, what about this? Or Paul says, what about this? Um, they'll, they'll do it and change it and throw ideas out there. And, and, uh, it really becomes a collaborative thing. And, you know, Paulina from a QA standpoint can ask questions. Um, and so it, it makes it a nice collaborative thing and, and you can see there's comments in here and so um as we're going through those exercises ryan or whoever will make notes for themselves right so we're capturing that those conversations um so we're still using you know the the developers have the links to the prototypes within figma here um but it's kind of like we mentioned it's like that 79 percent or less right yep um it's it's before we're ready to start kind of estimating and kind of go okay we really need to twist the bolts down on on what it's going to take to build this um but everybody has a part of that yeah i mean like um i think as like developers are pulled in early on and i think this is where you talk about coffee with poland where matt and ryan kind of Nothing too pre- and this is where you kind of move things around, right? And as a developer, you come in early, you can really do like the art of the possible and really like, you know, kind of push the envelope. Yeah. But when you get there, when you get to like, let's say 90%, that's when it becomes real. And it's like, okay, what can we do? What can't we do? And then let's, let's push that forward in the Zeppelin and then, you know, actually build upon that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, I think you'll see here in a minute when we, when we get into the Zeppelin, but I think the nice thing here is it, 
it allows the designers to do what they need to do to tell that story and and get us in a good pointed direction right Mm -hmm. you know we alluded to it earlier like beyond just the layers right where you don't you know as a developer it's not fun to go pecking through layers to try to export things out Um, but the the designers may reuse the same screen multiple times um, to help the the PO or or the client understand a flow. Um, But when it gets to the development team, um, you know, I I prefer, maybe it's where I get a little prickly, um, like I prefer not to see that same screen multiple times because you don't want the designer thinking, well, or the developer thinking, was there something different on that screen that I should be seeing that I don't, that I need to, you know? And so if we can make a flow that's like this, this is the one screen and you, you do those decisions off of that screen, um, it just makes it clear at the end of the day as we build the product. Um, but it allows the freedom here for the, you know, do whatever you need to to get us across that line. Oh, totally. Um, I think this is all the ideation process, right? And yeah, yeah, where, totally. You know, I think what really shines is the real time collaboration. Yeah, well, yeah. It show, um, yeah. I think once you bring this over into Zeppelin, um, I think things change a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So when we hit that, that 80%, ooh, let me bounce back here. There we go. So once we hit that 80%, um, you know, Ryan, Scott and team will start pushing, migrating these over to Zeppelin. And you'll notice here, one thing we've done, and it, this has evolved a little bit over time is um, the, the sections that you see here correspond to the Epic. Mm-hmm. Um, the Epic being um, the broad feature that we want to accomplish like invoice and billing. And then, Within invoice and billing, there's submitting a payment and selecting a card and all that good stuff. Um, and we used to label the screens, the individual screens, in a manner that kind of gave you an idea of sequencing to the Epic. Mm-hmm. Um, but because there's so much of these integrations in play now, that just, um, it, it's extra work <laughs> to do. And it's a lot of work, actually. To, it was it was a lot of work to, to kind of keep those in sync. And so now with that that Jira integration, we don't have to worry as much about that. Um, yeah, you have a lot of tickets attached to this, right? Oh, awesome yeah. Like yeah, that's, and you know, that's one of the, one of my favorite parts of when we do the Jira integration as, as a developer or as a, a QA or BA, um, when they go in and, and, you know, you're a developer, right? So like, you know, you're going to be working on ticket, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, you, you probably don't care as much of what particular screen that is at the moment. <laughs> and so being able to drop down and, and go hunt down that ticket um, and hit it and be able to jump straight to it, just a time saver. And you can do it from Jira as well. And we'll see that in a moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. But regardless of what tool you're in, Jira or Zeppelin, there's that connective piece there. Yeah, it's that two-way integration where, you know, can't really go wrong. Whether you're in Zeppelin or Jira, you'll get the information that you need and it'll link you know, to each other. Yeah. Um, so if you want, let me, you want me to jump into a screen? Sure, yeah, let's check out a screen. Okay. Um, so when we when we jump into a screen, um, again, you know, they, they see um, the attached Jira ticket, mm-hmm. all the things that our, our app developers want to see here from a, being able to grab icons and asset or decide whether or not they, what kind of casing they want on the assets, deciding what type of asset they want. Um, there's some of that direct Xcode integration, you know, like there's those little things that actually save a lot of time at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of that there. And then you got these guys, I'm sure you're going to want to talk about here in a second. Um, that I love. I want to do a thunder, uh, Adam. You know, you- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that really kind of start helping us understand where this screen lives in the scope. Yeah, I think we touched upon this a little bit later in the talk, but um, it's a little foreshadowing to flows, you know, and uh, yeah. how you folks use that. So that's really cool to see. Yep. Um, okay, so like you have this uh, Jira ticket assigned to the screen. Now, when you open Jira, um, what do you see there? Yeah, let's jump over to Safari. Um, so, what you'll have is pretty typical, I think, for um, a, a task or a ticket in Jira with the AC. Um, you know, you'll you'll see as our across our teams, um, and this is one of those teams decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, is sometimes you'll see a static screenshot um, put in the actual task itself. Um, I think there's still some post-traumatic syndrome um, of the days of not having version de- design files. 
Yep. Um, and in the cover of night, a design changing, and then the developer being like, that is not what I pointed. Um, and so they, some teams still love having that screenshot there. And so, you know, why not? Um, but you, you do, you know, you scroll down, you have your Zeppelin integration here that's making that connection. Um, and they can always kind of check out, look at the screen, make sure it, it's still matching. Um, they can jump straight from here into Zeppelin if they need to, to start pulling assets as well. Um, but the tickets themselves, you know, pretty, pretty common, nothing too out of the ordinary there. Got it. I'm just curious, uh, do the developers have a certain workflow that they all follow? So you mentioned this Jira board here. If I was a developer on your team, would I start with Jira and then, you know, see all the issues and kind of map that out and then go to Zeppelin or would I start uh, Zeppelin first and look at the, maybe the overall flow and maybe look at the screens and then go to Jira ticket? Is there like a process over there for yeah. things? Yeah, I mean, Jira, Jira is still our source of truth, right? For, from, for the team as a whole. Um, and, and so Zeppelin is kind of a supportive tool of that. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, you know, that the develop, the developer should never be seeing anything in Zeppelin when they get to this point for the first time, yeah. right? They, at this point, they've already, they've seen those screens kind of mature mm -hmm. and some of those coffee with Poland, some of those other conversations. Um, so they've seen those, those things happen. Um, but yeah, end of the day, everybody kind of knows source of truth, like, our marching orders and and what we're targeted towards lives here in Jira. Got it. Yeah, and then that totally makes sense. Where you know your source of truth is Jira, but Zeppelin kind of supplements that in terms of development. And then to your point, you could just click on that screen and get all the assets and curate things that you need. You don't have to go and play detective work and hunting around layers to get whatever you need. Um, so that definitely makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Thank you for showing us this. Yeah. This is great. Um, and one last thing, I know we kind of um, foreshadowed this, but flows. I know you were yes. the very one of the very first people to use flows. We launched at the end of January. Um, so yeah, excited for you to kind of share what you folks did with flows. Yeah, yeah. So I had historically used another tool um, to do um, kind of diagramming exactly what flows is, is doing, which is take the screens. I would actually um, export the screens out of Figma or Sketch into this tool. Um, and do the same framing, right? Draw, draw the arrows and the decision trees. Um, but I was kind of coming, becoming the bottleneck in that situation. I'm trying to keep up. And it was, a, it was something that the product owners and the developers really found value in. And, and so they'd be like, hey, Adam, can you update you know, the, our flow? Um, and so when you guys rolled out flows, um, I, had tip, I had initially, um, just for giggles, right? Um, we were in the process of doing some of this oh, authentication stuff. So I, I really quickly kind of, you know, map that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but Camilla, who is our program or our project manager for United Rentals, um, knowing that I was being the bottleneck in that situation, she was <laughs> like, Hey, like, could you teach me that tool? Um, so I can kind of help out. And she's being very polite about it. And, uh, and, and I was like, actually, there may be an easier way for you to do that and not, you know, just not introduce another tool. Um, and so I, I spent, you know, I don't know, 30 minutes tops with her um, on like a Thursday in the office. Well, I was in the office. She was in Warsaw. Um, <laughs> and I, and I just kind of showed her how this worked. Um, and then on Monday uh, back in the office um, and she showed me that she had started, and I think it's evolved, obviously, because they, they're using it. Mm -hmm. um, she started mapping out um, our pickup request flow. Um, oh. And so shapes hadn't been pushed out yet. So that's why you don't see any shapes yet. Um, um, but she immediately latched on to it because I think she, along with the developers, all saw value with the other tool that I use, and they'd become um, appreciative of what it was doing that it was missing for this for them like the prototypes are great right but the prototypes are very um they don't give you context it's a very where do i need to click how did i get there yep. um and so for them to see this high level mapping it is very important yeah i mean you went over a lot i um, just want to back up a little bit and i want to double click into something so camille the project manager right yeah yeah so then, she yeah so she's kind of she's our pm so she's not a developer, not a designer. You, you nope. showed it to her on Thursday in passing. You worked on it over the weekend. I don't think that much time. And she showed up with something on Monday. I mean, I think that in itself is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, because I think it kind of goes to our point of 
hey, we want like a um, a safe place for everyone to kind of come in, whether you're a developer yeah. or a designer or a, a PM or copywriter or management, um, where you don't need a lot of training, where things won't break, where you can kind of delve right into it. Um, it really like actionable things like it's flow, right? And it's something that um, feels like anyone could kind of do, you know, as long as you're involved in a project, um, you're empowered to like kind of create this. And um, the good thing is, is that even if you actually don't delete something out of here, your design file is still safe, right? Like yeah. you can still export everything out here. So it's, it's a protected space um, where everyone can kind of come in and, you know, contribute, collaborate. Yep, yep. Cool. So uh, I think you talked about shapes before. Um, is there any way we could like yeah. the shape into one of these flows? I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, here, let me, I'll just, uh, I mean, saw it, but I'll, I'll delete it. Um, Nobody so saw that. Nobody saw that. No, no one saw it. <laughs> um, so, so typically what we do, and I, and I did this in the other tool, and, and you, you'll be used to this, June, is that, you know, there, there comes a screen here, um, and I've created my password. Um, I'm signing in, um, and at that point, we've got to decide, okay, does, does, you know, Mary have linked accounts? So can she see the equipment of, of a certain account, or does she have no linked accounts? She, she has a profile but she doesn't have linked accounts. And so we'd use a diamond in that shape right in that situation for a decision. And so we would say linked account, we'll say accounts because that's more common in their world. Um, and then we can draw, you know, simple little arrow there and we'll make this our yes, we'll make this our no. Mm -hmm. um, and I can just click on there until I want to put some text in there. Um, and so really the idea is to do something like this and you can position these as you need to as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but the idea is to be able at a higher level. So if I wasn't able to see or read the text, yep. um, I could really quickly looking down at shapes go, oh, there's some decisions that are happening. Um, is there, is that some, is that data I'm going to have to go find? Is that something I need to keep? Like, what do I, what, what decision do I need to make there? And so um, those kind of shapes can give to be cues essentially for the team. Yeah. And I think you hit on a good point, right? You, um, at a very macro view, uh, you kind of see the shapes and you can kind of see, oh, that's a decision thing. I think more importantly is this kind of flow here is a pretty simple application. Um, I think as a app kind of grows, you can see a lot more lines, like, like the project <laughs> yeah. showed right before, but you know, like yeah. something like this, right? So yeah. you, as a developer, I'm like, wow, there, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And there's a lot of lines. So without those shapes, I'm like, okay, this one part, there's a fork here, there's one green, one like what is all that? But I think with those shapes, it really um, as your project matures and grows or organically grows, it kind of matures with you so that you can see things in a very messy flow. Because you know, as it goes, it's gonna become bigger and bigger and bigger. And the more things you add on to it, the harder it's gonna be to read, unless um, you kind of zoom in and go like screen to screen. That would be like more prototyping than actual flow. So, um, and it, it, it's a good reality too, I think of like, um, I think it, it, it can help illustrate the complexity um, in a kind of a superficial way, right? But like, um, you know, if it, like I was mentioning, like if in, in Figma, it wouldn't be uncommon to see this screen maybe uh, four times aligned to each one of these flows, right? What? And it makes it really easy. And it's like, okay, for that one path, here it is. Um, but by adding that single screen and all the variations and, and breaks that it can have, it helps illustrate the complexity um, that's being executed. Um, and, and so I, I think that can that can help sometimes in those conversations of, you know, why is you know the estimation is, a, you know, four sprints. Um, why is it four sprints? And you know, not that messy lines <laughs> dictate sprints. Um, but it can kind of help like, hey, look, there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of things that we like gates that we have to worry about in this in this flow. Um, and so that can kind of help illustrate. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing us this awesome demo. Is there anything else you want to show before we kind of wrap this, this uh, talk up? Uh, you know, the, the one thing I think is a nice little touch. Um, and I'm starting I'm starting to see the team use it a bit more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, annotations. Yeah. Is, is the little annotations. Um, you know, I think, and, and some of this comes, I think, from the great working relationship that um, Ryan and Scott have with the development team in Poland, um, which is they kind of can anticipate, you know, we, we know some of the questions that are going to come. We've worked with each other long enough, right? Um, 
And so Ryan has been really good at putting in things like, hey, you know, we're going to have this default to the maximum number quantity or behavior, right? Like yep. when I, they tap this open the native number picker. Um, and so those little nudges um, or little notes um, will, you know, they'll, they'll be captured in the AC and in the tickets. And, and actually they're, you know, the number picker may be connected to this. Oh, it's right there um, in, the, in the screen variation. Um, but it at least gives them an idea um, so they don't, they, you know, kills maybe a few Slack messages um, that we have that documented. Yeah, I think those, I think annotations is um, one of those tools where it could kind of reduce the paper cut. Yeah, like you said, it could be information other places, maybe a direct Slack message, maybe somewhere in the email, but you need to do, once again, detective work to find that, right? And <laughs> as a developer, I think that's one of the most frustrating things when you don't have your the assets or whatever, you know, things that you need from a develop from a designer point of view. So you make sure that the designer's vision actually comes to life, you know, or else um, the developer would just do like whatever he or she thinks the best way to implement that is. And usually the designer will not be happy with, with that. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I think this is really great. It reduces the paper cut. Um, it really makes things very clear in terms of requirement and behavior. Um, I think it's like a little bit better version of notes, right? It's, it's a, it's yeah. a a very good way to um, get any developer up and running. You know, even a new one yeah. could come in here and it's like, oh, okay, those are requirements, those are behaviors, these are all the specs, let's go start building it, you know? Um, so yeah, I definitely think it reduces a lot of time. Cool, um, let's go ahead and get into the wrap up. So Adam, you don't have to share your screen anymore. Let's okay. go ahead and uh, kind of recap our talk. So um, there are a lot of things that you went over. I just want to recap like some of the challenges you're facing in the beginning. Number one, were you know designs are fluid and they could change. And um, you know, like you said, coffee with pollen, no design is too precious and pixels could be moved. And that's the nature of design. You know, you're already always iterating, but like how can you get everyone on the same page after that, right? And then um organizing a developer and designer for Epic can be challenging. And lastly, that devs hate working in design files because it's not their <laughs> native environment, right? And I think you alluded to this earlier on where it's not just one, it's not just Sigma, it's not just Sketch, it's not just XD, it's all three of them, you know? Because I think as an agency, um, it's pretty unique where, you know, you could go into a company and they may be a XD shop, they may be a whatever shop. And, and then, and, and as a developer, you're like, well, you need to learn all of that. And I think that's unfair, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, it's quite taxing. It, it, yeah, you know, I've always appreciated that, like, um, you know, I think there's been preferences on design tools, but I've always appreciated that the teams have been allowed to use kind of what the team wants to use at the moment. Um, and so, wait, you know, as long as the, the design team is in agreement with that, then I, I think we're comfortable with that. And that, and it, but, you know, there's like, that's where we, you know, we see Zeppelin and that's, like I mentioned, that's why we kind of, we, I just sent an email, sent an email to IT this afternoon because we were going through um, scheduling for next year for applications. Is like, you know, Zeppelin is our development tool. Like, don't put it in the design bucket, right? Like, it, it's an expectation, at least for the native app team, um, that it is a development tool to get the job done. Got it. And then, are there any other, uh, I don't know, benefits that you have with the Zeppelin and Jira integration together, like the two-way integration? No, I mean, you know, I think if anything, I think it's just a, it, it prevents that, that rabbit hole, like you said, like chasing things down of like, okay, now I got to go open Zeppelin and I got to like, what was the name of that screen? I have to go find it. Like, there's just a lot of that that goes on and, um, and that can happen in a lot of tools. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's why we've tried to use epics or we've tried to use higher things to group designs. So at least if, if you don't know the ticket number, um, and, and somebody can't give you that, then you could at least find the epic and then maybe find it. But with it, it can get complex, right? Because with screen mm -hmm. variations and all that in there, um, you may be looking for a screen that may be a variation of. Um, and so we, you, it's a fine line there, I think, where you try to figure out how, how complex you want that communication chain to be. Got it. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, communication is, is definitely hard, I think, with projects as they grow and you need something to kind of um, get everyone on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to kind of ask, it's, it's a little bit of a spicy question, is uh, we talked a lot about saving time, about paper cuts, <laughs> about 
um, less running around, less detective work. I'm just curious, can you quantify the time savings to our friends here? <laughs> I think that's what everyone wants to know. Like how much time did it save you? How much money did it save you? Uh, can you quantify any of that, Adam? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I think um, I get the need to do it from a, 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 like a business perspective. And, and I'm sure like, you know, as other like tools and companies kind of do those calculations, there's logic behind that. Um, but I've, I've always joked that like, it's not necessarily time or money saved, it's relationships saved, um, mm. mainly because um, it just, it, it can create less animosity or like, why do I need to go do this? Like, this is a, a tool that we can kind of use um, together to make sure that we're building the best product as a team. Um, and so that's always kind of been my reaction to that, that kind of idea, regardless of what it is, is like, if the team's working well together, um, you know, if they're asking to be on the same team as so-and-so and and they're staying together, like that's a win, right. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, Hey, we used this previously, this flow, let's modify it for this, this team to, to do this. Like those are the the wins that we want. And, and I think it's having the developers, um, selfishly here, um, having the developers, um, when they start getting Figma files thrown over the wall or, or sketch or whatever it may be going, poking me and going, Hey, Adam, they're not using Zeppelin. Um, but they, it's just because they're comfortable in that because they know that it gives them everything they, that they need to execute the design so that they don't get tickets kicked back from QA. Um, which is, you know, like your night, not your nightmare, but like, you know, you don't want to get a ticket back from QA that says, Hey, you didn't you know, this margins off, or this is the wrong icon or whatever, like, they want to feel like they're executing the vision. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they they feel like that tool does that. And, and so that's, again, I mean, that's why we kind of classify it as a development tool. Thanks for going over that. I mean, saving relationships, I think it's key, especially in any workplace. And it really, uh, I mean, the fruits of your labor really shows, right? You like, yeah. once again, not to toot your, your horns, I'm going to do it for you. You know, you got the Keynes Award for this web app. You got the Vega Award for the mobile. Uh, wait, the uh, was right? yeah. Keynes Award <laughs> for the mobile app, Vega Award for the web app, and um, you know, it saved over six, seven million dollars. That's huge, you know. Um, so that's really, really amazing, um, and that's great. And it's great that you saved, uh, you know, a lot of relationships. That's always a good thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> Adam. Thanks again for sharing your stories here. This was really amazing. Um, I learned a lot. Really appreciate you being the very first guest here on this new series we're launching. Um, I appreciate it. Adam, this camera's for you. Uh, go ahead and plug anything you want to plug to our friends here. Take it away. Yeah, thanks. So uh, I, I do not have anything selfishly to plug. And so I thought about it. And um, I, I have a, a soon-to-be 15-year-old, actually, in like a week. Um, son, uh, who loves loves horror movies, loves cinematography and, and film and writing, um, and so I thought I'll, I, I can try to score some cool dad points um, and plug his YouTube channel. Um, right. So his ha- his handle is Slurpy. I think we'll throw the link up, but like his handle is Slurpy. It's technically under my wife's name, so Slurpy like the drink Slurpy, Seven Eleven. Yeah, Slurpee. yeah. So it's like Slurpy, and then if you type in Slurpy and then Scream. Yep. He's done his own, he did his own version of Scream and it's like, um, you watched it, it was like 45 minutes, I think, right? And, it was amazing. Um, I could not yeah. believe how well and, he shot that. Yeah. So I thought, you know, if, if I could move the needle a little bit and all of a sudden he gets a, a few more subscribes or a few more views, um, I can look like a hero um, or he'll be mortified, one of the two. Um, <laughs> and so I thought I would try it. So you'll get the best out of the year award, you know, promoting your son's YouTube channel. Uh, we'll throw up the link here in a second. Uh, please raid uh, Adam's son's YouTube channel. Give him all the likes and the subs and all those good things. Um, as a cool kid say, you're supposed to smash that like button or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> um, so you're going to do it. Uh, Adam, before we break, just want to say thank you again. It was awesome having you. Um, hopefully we could do this again, maybe next year or a couple years later down the road. Um, yeah. Thank you again. It was awesome having you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Great. Well, thanks everybody for joining our very first episode. Here is Adam's son's YouTube uh, page, which is called Slurpee. That's his link. Um, so go ahead and, and do all those things like smashing the thing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> feel free to join our Discord and we'll be continuing our chat there. 
Uh, till next time, everybody. See you next month. Thank you again, and stay safe.